Okay, um, in this video I'll be showing you how to assemble um, a protoboard power supply that you'll be using uh, pretty much this entire semester. Um, what I have here is a printed circuit board here with all the components that you'll need to assemble it laid out. Here you have a, a type B USB connector, a barrel jack connector, and then you have these uh, little male header pins that will actually plug into your protoboard. And then all of these little surface mount components that um, are on the board. Here you have a little tiny resistor and a slightly bigger LED that will indicate when power is actually present. Here we have a 10 microfarad capacitor and you'll notice there are three of those. And then this thing is a, um, a 5 volt linear voltage regulator which um, is one way of providing uh, 5 volts when you are using the barrel jack. Um, and then this little tiny thing here with the three legs is a 2.5 voltage reference. 2.5 volt voltage reference that we'll use for kind of a voltage that's halfway between 0 and 5. Okay, so the first thing to do uh, once you've got all the parts uh, together is to basically put all these little tiny surface mount components on the board before you start putting the big connectors or the pins in place. And it may uh, seem like it's going to be a really hard thing to do, but it's really not all that bad. The first thing to do is to apply a little bit of flux with one of these uh, felt tip flux pens. And I think what I'll do is I'll show you how to do uh, one of the bigger components first. The little tiny ones are about the same. And so I'm going to rotate this board just to make it a little bit easier for me to uh, work with here. And what you want to do is apply a little bit of flux to the pads that you're going to be working with. So here I'm going to use this 10 microfarad capacitor first. And what you'll do is first apply a little tiny bit of solder to one of the pads. Okay, so here's, a, here's my soldering iron and I'm just going to apply a little tiny bit of solder to the this pad here on the left. That's a process called tinning the pad. You can see there's a little bit of a bulge of solder there. And the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the component with my tweezers. I'm going to put it down where I want it and just heat up that solder with the component seated on the pad and that's going to tack the component in place. So you can see I can move the whole board with that um, with that uh, soldered down to that one pad. And now what you want to do is you want to put solder on the other side. And to do that, what I typically do is lay the, the wire solder down there in that corner and just reflow it. And what you'd like to see is a nice fillet, which is a nice little curved surface that goes from the pad up onto the side of the component. And now I'm going to go back and put a little bit more solder on this side so that there's a nice fillet as well. Okay, okay so that's one down. We're going to do the same thing for the other two caps. First apply a little bit of flux to the pads. It doesn't have to be a super lot of, of flux. I'm going to tin one of the pads. Like so. Grab one of the caps with the tweezers. Tack it down. Do the same with the other one. And now I'm going to get my solder. And turn it around and revisit the side that we had just tacked. So, okay, 
Now the next thing I'm going to do is um, this 5 volt regulator. Every so often it's good to clean this excess solder off your, the tip of your soldering iron. Again, the procedure is the same. I'm going to put some flux on the pads that I'm going to be soldering to. It's in one of the pads. Turn the regulator around so it's in the right orientation. Put it down. Tack it in place. Okay, now I've got, instead of just one extra pad to solder down, I've got four altogether. And so what I'm going to do is start out on this side. Solder one, two, and then I'll revisit the one that I tacked on this side. And then I'll go through and do this one. Okay, the regulator's done. Now we get the fun little tiny ones. They're actually no worse than the bigger ones. Okay, so apply a little flux. Let's do that tiny little resistor first. And maybe the LED. in one of the pads. Pick up the little resistor. Procedure is the same. We just heat the solder on the pad. Bring it in there with the tweezers. Hold it in place while the solder cools. Now with the LED, the LED is the only component on here that has a symmetric package and the direction matters. I don't know if you can see this or not, but there are two little green dots on the LED visible from the top. And those you want to have facing to the right. Okay, so you want to make sure that it's in the right orientation. You tack it down, like so. And again, the procedure is exactly the same as it was with the larger components. You want to have a little... Apply a little solder to the other side in each case. And then we want to go back on the other side. You know, these guys, especially with that resistor, you may not have to do very much other than just touch it. We've got one more, one more of the surface mount components, and that's the voltage reference. So again, we apply a little bit of flux to the pads. The flux helps the solder flow. And so we're going to tin this pad over here. Oop. Just 
scooters around the right orientation. Tack it down. Should be all the surface mount components. There's some flux residue on the board. You can kind of see around here this yellowish brownish stuff. We'll clean that off at the end with a little bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol or ethanol. Um, and so the next thing to do is to uh, solder the headers onto the board. And the way that I would recommend doing this is by using an old solderless breadboard as a jig to hold the pins. So what you want to do is break off these sets of pins from the longer header. You'll need two sets of five and two sets of three. And what you'll first do is insert the pins into the solderless breadboard. And this, these, these will hold the pins uh, perpendicular to the breadboard in exactly the right place. And now what you're going to do is basically just put the put the little board down on top of these pins, like so. And so now uh, the pins are held in place in a perfect position. And what, what we're going to do is to do through-hole soldering, you don't apply flux because there's going to be flux inside the core of the, the wire solder, or the solder wire. And what you want to do is heat the little pad that the pin comes through and the pin with the soldering iron and then bring some solder in the side. You want to heat the work and not the solder in this case. And you just want to go through and visit each one. And again what you'd like to see is a nice little fillet that extends from the little ring that's the pad up onto the up onto the uh, the pin. It goes through the hole. I like to clean the tip of my soldering iron off after about every four or five, four or five um, connections when I'm doing through-hole soldering, just because uh, the flux residue gets kind of nasty on the tip of the soldering iron. Let's go to the other side. Okay. Now we want to unplug this from our jig. You can see these are nice, uh, nice and uh, perpendicular to the board. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do the um, the barrel jack connector and the USB connector. And so what you do is you basically put this in the right set of holes. And if, of course you want the, the connectors to be on the top of the board, which is where all the little silk screen printing is, um, and not on the bottom of the board. Some people sometimes tend to um, build this thing with the connectors on the wrong side. Um, if you do that, don't throw the board out. We can desolder stuff. Just come find Brian or I and we can show you how to do that. So I might start with the USB connector and solder these four little connection points here.
you want to solder the board lock here. And the barrel jack connector. Looks like I'm running out of solder. Get some more in a second here. Certainly don't need to fill these holes in. We should make sure that there's a good connection. to it. Now, uh, now I'd suggest uh, going and finding a bottle of ethanol or isopropyl alcohol and hosing it down, or maybe over a trash can, and uh, using a toothbrush to mechanically abrade uh, the surface uh, a little bit to get some of the gunk off. But um, if you plug this in, you should see uh, this gr green LED light up, and you should be able to measure uh, 2.5 volts relative to zero, both here and here. And you should be able to me measure 5 volts relative to 0 um, if you have power plugged in, of course. And that's all there is to it. Um, if you do have uh, difficulty with it not working, um, please track one of us down to help us, uh, or for us to help you um, figure out what's wrong with it and rework it. That's part of the fun. Please, like I said, don't throw it out. We have a limited number of boards. Um, we do have extra components but we do, uh, do have a limited number of boards, and so rather than throwing it out and starting again with a new board, it's much better if you uh, do a little bit of rework on it to fix it. Thanks for watching.